Hi everybody, this is Mitch. Um, this is part two of last week's Starfield 90mm f5.5 Starfield uh, telescope with the 50mm uh, guider and the field flattener. And also I use several different cameras to try to get some results. So this video is about showing the results of what the telescope uh, was capable of doing in a very, very limited way. The reason for last week was a full moon. I had to shoot uh, these targets here under a full moon. So obviously it's, this is going to be far, far, far from good or perfect. But it'll give you an example of the field of view and some of the um, capabilities if you're using a DSLR uh, or your CMOS camera, whatever make it is, whether again, QHY, ZWO, ASI, Altair, Astro. So let's start with the first shot that I got last week um, <clears throat> with the moon up. And all of these are very short exposures. I think everything is under two hours, an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes, two hours and 15 minutes. Uh, so let's all keep that in mind. Uh, you guys can keep that in mind when you're looking at these. So let's start with the Pleiades. Of course, always the simplest one. So I'll keep that up for a few seconds. So here's the Pleiades. Again, I think it's two hours um, of integration. And I believe this might have been, uh, a lot of the shots you're going to see here are pr pretty well the DSLR, though on a few shots I'm going to show you, like in narrow band, that will be the ASI 1600. I don't remember or don't recall doing the Altair Astro uh, 183. Could be but I, I don't think so. So here we go. This is a M45, the Pleiades. I was zooming a little bit here on uh, the gas. It's got a just unbelievable detail. So really, really amazing detail there for that little refractor. Um, in terms of um, sharpness, that's uh, M45. Uh, another version again, this time I just purposefully through uh, HDR on top, a local contrast enhancement or a little bit of, I just snapped up the color just to see um, if, you know, if it could be improved. These, none of these are processed. I just stretched them and did a little bit of denoising. Basically, it's about, uh, you know, showing you the field of view and its capability in just two hours. Here's the extracted luminance from the Pleiades, as you can see. Lots and lots. This is two hours. Imagine 10 hours, 12 hours. I mean, I, I can't see 12 hours. This is two. It's very, very good. And then I did, um, let me just see if I can hover over these here for a second. I think this is still a luminance channel. Uh, yeah. Let me use extract just to see what it would look like. All right, so that was M45. I believe this one here is still luminous also. Okay. Now, I used I use a reducer. You're not supposed to use a reducer on, you know, you're already at F5. I'm just going to compare these two here for a minute. You're already at F5, so why would you put a reducer on here and drop from 500 millimeters to 300 millimeters? Well, it really speeds things up. But again, I want to show you something. I, I think that on the right here, this one right here, this one here, this is the uh, DS. This is the Canon T3i, and I, I think it might be 45 minutes or an hour. But I pulled off. I pulled off the um, field flattener, and I put on the reducer. Now the actual feel of this is huge. I cropped a whole bunch out just because I wanted these two frames to look alike. But DSLR versus like the Hypercan. If like I'm trying to say, I'm trying to recall whether I used it or not. I don't. I don't, I don't remember. Um, but the difference between the cameras that are dedicated for uh, uh, deep sky imaging as compared to a DSLR, there, there's a huge difference in how sensitive the cameras are. This was about 33% quantum efficiency. This was more like 60. So just you know, keep that in mind when you're using camera. No, you'll know that your DSLRs have a lot less uh, sensitivity, and so let, there's a lot less... Um, nebula that's coming in and of course because it's DSLR and it's a little bit noisier a lot noisier than you know uh, 1.2 electrons per 
ADU of noise, of read noise. So let's go to M33, which just again, about an hour's worth. Here's your field of view. If you're shooting a 500 millimeter, you'll pretty well feel the frame. It's pretty nice, nice detail, about an hour and a half. Here we go, M33. I'll go this one. I believe that's the extracted luminance. Got, see, see, what's called, see what's happening here with the moon? Man, it was such bad gradient at night. Okay, so that was 33, 45. Let's go to the Pac-Man. First, we'll go to the color. I was really impressed with that. Now, I'm a little bit further away from the moon this time. This is the second night. Uh, as you can see, the star color is just great. Stars are really sharp. And there's no autofocus here. This is all focused by a Batnoff mask. And you hope for the best that over the night, as the telescope cools down, your aluminum shrinks, it gets out of focus. But I was really impressed. I really liked the Pac-Man. turned out pretty good. Very little exposure. Again, I don't know, uh, two-minute subs. What's 30 times to 60 minutes, so maybe 60 times two minutes, or was it reverse, maybe it was, 30, maybe it was 30 times two minutes, uh, I can't remember. But very nice, color's good, very sharp, color, the, the rendition of the color is really, really good on the Pac-Man. Again, I extracted luminance for those who want to see the luminance channel from the Pac-Man, so it's pretty nice, very nice. A little bit noisy, but again, this might have been a DSLR, so expect way, way more. Now, let's switch over. Now I know that I'm going to go to the ASI 1600 Pro and we're going to put on the hydrogen alpha channel filter, but in that channel of HA. And look at, let's look at uh, IC1848 IC and IC1805. I think it's 1805. Oh, I got a bad memory. So this is, the, this is the heart nebula and the fish head. So this nebula, this is taken with the, uh, the star field, 90 millimeter, F5.5. But this time on in hydrogen alpha. Now this is a very strange experiment that I tried here. Again, I wasn't trying to produce any awesome images. I wanted you guys to see the result with the camera. The stars are really, really, really tight on HA. There is a ton of data here. Now you might ask, well, how long was this exposure? Well, this is not how long this exposure was. What I did here, again, it's noisy because I haven't processed it. This, this image is a accumulation of single frames. For example, in here, you'll find one 30-second frame, one 60 seconds, one two minutes, one three minutes, one five minutes. There's probably a seven minute in there, a 10-minute exposure. By the way, that's now we're at what? 600 seconds? Yeah. 500 is, five minutes is 300. 10 minutes is, is 600. There's also 900 in here. There's a 15 minute sub in here and an 1800 minute sub or 20 minute, 1800 seconds, 20 minute sub. And I took all these singles in that one night. Over a three hour period, I did a 20, a 15, a 10, a five, four, three, two, 60 seconds, one minute and 30 seconds. I added them all together. I just went to, into uh, Astro Pixel Processor and I said, Throw these together, no darks, no flats, no bias, no flat darks, just, just give me the light frame. This is what I got. This is the accumulation of uh, whatever all those numbers add for. But 20 minute subs, stars are round. 10 minute subs, stars are round. Five minute subs, which is what most people shoot, stars are round. But I mean, 20 minutes, 1800 seconds, uh, you know, 900 seconds. Well, uh, the telescope's working really, really well. Okay, I'm just going to shrink that a little bit. Gonna minimize that. Now I'm going to zoom in on the, the next shot should be just the heart. So let's just open up the heart. I don't want to zoom in because, oh, by the way, all these, if I'm not mistaken, the guider wasn't running. Uh, the reason I know is because there's raining pixels. Uh, so the, 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 every, every, every shot, every frame, the telescope moves a little bit. Normally, PhD would correct that, but I just I just said, ah, just let it go, let it go. I, mean, I was in the house, the telescope was outside, and I go, I'm, I'm already set up, clouds are coming in, so let's hurry. So I did all these little experiments, and this is just the crop from this guy right here. So I basically just took this section, and I cropped it for you guys to see it. So this is a crop, it's not the full frame. And there's your heart in the middle there. Ooh, don't zoom in too much, it's pretty noisy. Again, it's a, it's a, it, there are a bunch of singles. That's the heart. Let's look at the fish. I mean, that that's really, really nice if you want to, you know, 
do that. Don't do that, Mike. All right, so this is your accumulations of uh, one, two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20 minute subs together. But I mean, look at the detail. If I took time and did, you know, 12 hours on this of HA and 12 hours of O3, can you imagine this telescope has the power to collect light? No doubt about it, you see it right here. Um, my next would be, uh, again, it's M45 with the reducer. Let's have a look. I think I showed you that earlier. Canon T3i DSLR ISO 800. Three minute subs, maybe two minute subs. Why so short? The full moon was killing me. No filters at all. So, and finally, quickly, I did M31. A little bit washed out. I don't know if I can help you guys see this a bit better. Let me just open up curves here and this and that. And maybe I can just darken it a bit. The moon was killing me. So that's much better. Bring up the galaxy up a little bit. And then just close that and apply it just so you can see just, just no contrast at all. There. Why no contrast? The moon. This was a white, 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 white sky. But detail, sharpness, stars, amazing. There's your little uh, dust lanes that come right into the core. There's all kinds of dust lanes. What do you want for like about an hour, I guess? You know, I had to shoot in between clouds and stuff like that. But nice, very, very nice. So that's all I got. That's what, uh, this is what the uh, telescope and the flattener, um, the little guider scope, this complete combo, ready to go kit. Um, I was, um, I was amazed. Well, if we look, just let's quickly go back to M45, the Pleiades, two hours, I think they're three minutes sub, maybe two minute subs. Um, it was, it was, um, it was a little bit uh, impressed. Like at first you just see a single sub, but then you bring in, you know, all 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 of them and stack them together. These did have, I think they had darks and flats and bias, but, and I, I, I added way too much color here. You can tell I stretched the color like crazy oversaturated it but the point was to see all the individual um uh dust lanes and their angles and their twisting like these two lines coming down i don't think i remember seeing that on my other show photos last year and then there's one or two three lines going up i don't remember seeing those either like there's like a bar here uh and then there's this nice little there's flux all the way up in this section here all the way up here all the way down here don't like zooming in because i didn't process that real well i just real quick and dirty but the flux just goes off and off and on and on so that's it this is uh the star field 90 millimeters f 5.5 at some point i reduced it down to f 3.3 do not do that because your stars on the outer edges are going to be horrible there's it's gonna be coma right makes sense um normally at f5 you sh use a field flattener. It's a refractor. So enough said. I don't know what else to say. You guys saw the video of the hardware. Now you're seeing a quick stills of the software. It's ability to collect frames over a couple of different cameras. The ASI 1600, the T3i. Might be a couple of shots in there where it was the Hypercam, Altair. I don't have a QHY. doesn't matter. The telescope performed very, very well. And I think um, pretty well done. So thanks for watching this. Please comment, leave something below. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. But I think this was a very, very good test. I think it was successful. I think we had, um, um, the sky was horrible. I mean, if that's if, if this had been a new moon and not so many clouds going by and me having to cut short everything, I would have tried shooting something for, you know, six hours or eight hours and maybe just show two good images what the refractor can do. But it, it's it turned out well anyways even with the moon and I, it's washed out and i tried to do the best i could to darken the background and remove some of the gradients it was horrible like i mean m31 it was just it was the sky was washed out i saw four stars all right so i guess you guys get the point thank you for subscribing um and leave some comments below i'll do my best to answer and of course where can you find this telescope well it came from ontariotelescopes.com by the way and from Steve Malia. So enjoy it, guys. Uh, let me know what you think. And we'll see you again on another, on another more testing and more images and more hardware, hopefully, to come in the past. Thanks a lot. See you later.